Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience and, of course, those of you here in the classroom can ask questions of our guests this evening. So I hope you jot a few notes down and give us a call later on. The numbers will be on the screen. We have another very interesting presentation for you this evening. Tonight we are featuring the Hawaii Community College Food Service Program. And if we can get the camera on my guest, I'd like to introduce the, the guest this evening. We have Alan Okuda. Alan is the uh, head instructor there at the Hawaii Community College Food Service Program. Also joining Alan Okuda tonight, we have Philip uh, Praniel. Uh, he's the other instructor there at the uh, Community College Food Service Program. And the students that we have on this evening are Curtis Nihi Pali, and we also have Rosie Colon, and we have Enmi Kaul, uh, Nem, Nen, Nenna Jack, and Catherine Fonseca, and Dwayne Ishii. So they'll be preparing various dishes for you this evening. So I'm going to turn the class over to Alan Okuda and we can get right into the cooking class. So Alan, why don't you go ahead and take over? Okay, uh, why don't you guys take a seat and we'll call you up as we need. Uh, good evening class. Uh, thank you for having us here this evening. Uh, tonight we'll be featuring a lot of different local fishes that uh, you can find in the markets today. Fish is a very good source of protein. It's fairly inexpensive. So we're going to feature some different things that I'm sure you're familiar with uh, using different preparation styles. Tonight, uh, Enmei is going to do her uh, specialty. So why don't we get started, Enmei? Explain what you're doing. Okay. It's an honor to be part of uh, Dr. Fuji's show. And today I'm going to do is a Korean fried ahi. Um, <coughs> okay, that's Korean fried ahi. Yes. You can go to the market, buy the already uh, prepared ahi for you, or you can buy the whole uh, a piece of uh, ahi and the skin then and fillet then and the cut it size like this and the dredge in the flour. Okay, so you and then coat it with flour? Yes. Okay. And then you you have whole part of the oil there, and then you use a thermometer to check out the, the oil temperature. Should be around 220. That's a perfect temperature for you to dip in your ahi. So I think now it's ready. So I will dip in. 220 degrees. That's right. Okay. So you don't have anything else inside the flour that's just straight flour? Yeah, pretty straightforward, just a okay. plain flour. So this is one of your favorite recipes, huh? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> and also with this Korean fried ahi, uh, Enmei is going to make a Korean ahi sauce. Yeah, special sauce go okay. with uh, this uh, ahi. So, Alan, how many students do you have in your program this year? Uh, currently, we have uh, 15 students in the second year class, mm -hmm. and we have a total of 20 students in the first year class. I see. So, mm -hmm. are you still looking for students for next uh, semester? Well, every semester during the fall, we, we try to take about 30 students uh, that initially sign up. So, we will be looking for potential uh, future chefs. So, if you're interested, please uh, come and sign up, and uh, we'd be happy to have you. Okay. And you can be up here cooking fish next semester also. <laughs> so are, are there any particular requirements to become a, a, a chef going through your program? Well, Alan? basically a, a love of cooking. You've got to be a good understanding in math and English, communication skills, okay. and be willing to work hard and long hours, and uh, the rewards are great. The compensation is good if you uh, really put your mind to it. Everything you put in is what you're getting out, so <coughs> please consider uh, joining the food. Everybody's got to eat. That's right. 
And like Chef Philip says, nobody trusts a skinny chef. Okay? Mm. Right, Philip? I don't know, I'm not skinny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what someone told me once. I, I said on the air, never trust a skinny chef, but then I think there was a skinny chef in the audience and uh, they called me up. <laughs> <laughs> So how long do you uh, fry the uh, the ahi? Uh, so it's golden brown. Yes, both sides golden brown and. Okay. And so is this a, a kind of a dish that uh, they serve in uh, Korea, or is this uh, your own creation? Um, I guess I got the inspiration from Mr. Okuda. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, actually, this eye is pretty, uh, pretty fresh because uh, we caught it about two weeks ago. So. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, like ahi, is it, is it good to uh, kind of let the ahi sit for a while yes. in, instead of eating it real fresh? Well, if it's a matter of, uh, if it's a smaller size ahi, it's, it's best to eat it right away. But if you're looking at a sashimi grade, they normally rest it for two to three days. I see. To let it mellow out and soften up. Because when you initially catch a large one, the, the meat is very firm and it's almost uh, crunchy. <coughs> but there are certain people who like it like uh, certain types of meat. They prefer it fresh. But the ahi is better if it's rest for two or three days. Mm. And in Hawaii, we're blessed because we have a lot of uh, fresh fish available, and it's uh, fairly inexpensive. And so, so ahi is most, uh, uh, mostly available during the summer months, that, right? That's correct. Well, right now, a lot of smaller ahi is available within a 15, 20, 25 pound size. Uh, and it's fairly cheap, around five, six dollars a pound versus uh, 13, 14 dollars for the good ahi right now. Huh? Or do you feel the, uh, the population of uh, ahi is going down? Yeah, definitely. So definitely, yes. They're going to have to start regulating uh, the size of the fish that you catch. Otherwise, That's uh, true. pretty soon we won't have any ahi, right? That's correct. So uh, if you notice, we have a display of different fishes in the front. Uh, this is utilizing a lot of the local fishes that's available right now. Maybe we can get an overhead yeah. shot of and the uh, display in the front here. So Nena's going to explain a little bit more about it. But this is really using stuff that people aren't very familiar or not uh, happy about eating. But if you notice, we made a pretty nice variety of dishes using it. So you'll get a chance to taste. But this is the lesser known fish available today. Okay. So how are we doing there? And uh, me? Pretty much if, um, just maybe a few minutes. Okay. In the meantime, I can uh, demonstrate how we can make this uh, Korean sauce for okay. this. Uh, the Korean ahi sauce? Yes. Uh, I have a one and a half cups shoyu. Okay, uh, one and a half cup of shoyu, shoyu. or soy sauce? Yes. And uh, I have this um, three garlic minced. Okay, three minced. cloves of garlic minced? Yes. And then I have uh, ginger, also is uh, means of very fine. Okay, and about a one inch uh, ginger, finger of ginger that's been grated or minced? Uh, either way, grated okay. on, yeah. And the next I will put in is chili. Uh, either you use a fresh chili pepper or you don't have it, you can use a just powder, chili powder. Okay, uh, preferably two fresh chili peppers Yeah, minced. and. Uh, if you use chili powder, probably just one teaspoon. Okay, and if you use chili powder, one teaspoon. Yes. And next ingredient, I will use uh, one cup of sugar. Okay, one cup of sugar. Yes. And next one, I have a. Uh, Green onion already uh, chopped very fine. I was dumping in there. Okay, three stalks of green onion yes. finely chopped. Yes. Um, I also have a quarter cup of sesame seeds. It's been toasted very uh, 
Okay, um, a quarter cup of sesame, toasted sesame seeds. seeds yes. Mm, that looks like a good flavorful sauce. Mm, I guess. The last one is one teaspoon of black pepper powder. Okay, one teaspoon of black pepper. Yes. Okay. okay there. So we just mix it together. Do you have to heat that up or just uh, just mix it up like that and that's just fine? Just mix up is fine. Yeah. Okay. Be because of time constraints, actually, we should heat it up before the sauce is put in, but uh, but this will work also. Okay. Okay. Just put them. Okay. So once the uh, ahi is fried, then you just uh, yeah, dip it in the, in the, the sauce. sauce. Yes. Ah. Kind of like the Korean chicken, yeah? Pretty Basically similar. the same yeah. recipe. <laughs> Except we're using ahi. Mm -hmm. mm, that's going to be tasty. Yeah. Oh, looks like uh, our okay. students are going to have a feast tonight. A lot of ahi there. Yeah, put everything up. Okay. And so that is the preparation of uh, Korean fried ahi with uh, Korean ahi sauce by Enmei Tao. And next we're going to do a partially breaded mahi mahi. Partially breaded mahi mahi. And we're going to have rosy cologne. Uh, he's going to prepare this dish for us. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194E, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hawaii Community College uh, Culinary Arts or Food Service Program. And we're featuring uh, the students there. And uh, now we're going to have Rosie prepare her partially breaded mahi-mahi. Good evening. It's a pound of mahi mahi here that's been diced, cut into cubes actually. So, okay. uh, two pounds of mahi mahi cut into one inch cubes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I pre cooked most of it, so I have about three fourths pound left. Okay. I have half a cup of flour. Half a cup of flour. I have two um, beaten eggs with half a cup of water. Okay. Two beaten eggs with a half a cup of water. Mm -hmm. And then I have my two cups of panko. Okay. And inside the panko, I have um, parsley chopped. Okay, about a half a cup of parsley chopped. Mm -hmm. and so I'm uh, just going to take my mahi and um, dredge it with flour. That's two cups of panko, panko flakes? Mm hmm that's correct. Okay. So. Then all you do is just coat the Yeah, you're mahi gonna mahi coat it first with the flour. Okay. After we get it coated, oops. So, uh, We'll just put it in the egg. How did you, okay, first the flour. First the flour. Then into the egg wash. Mm hmm then into the egg wash. Okay. So where did you get this recipe from, Rosie? Um, from my instructor. Mahi Mahi is a real nice fish, though, to eat. I enjoy this a lot. Did you have to twist your arm a lot to come on the program tonight? Oh, not at all. I was really happy um, to get chosen to come on the show again. So after we're done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and um, put the fish in the bag because it's a little bit more neater okay. to just get it coated. Coat them really well with the egg so the panko can stick nicely. So what are your plans when you finish up at the uh, community college? Um, I, I don't know, maybe um, work in Kona or maybe go back to the mainland. And work in some hotel or something? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just ask for what's right and perfect. Okay, well that's, a, that's a good way to coat the uh, 
Yeah, it's a little bit neater than without dirtying up a bunch of plates. Yeah. yeah. Let me put some. I need a. Tell us to drain your fish. Okay, I'll get another one. Mm-hmm. Like shake it? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not we're not gonna bake it, we're gonna fry it. Yeah. Okay. Almost like that the advertisement set it and forget it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna dip them in the oil. When I'm frying it's always good to away from you because the oil will pop <laughs> on you. Okay. So so that, I guess that's going to be somewhere around 220 degrees also, yeah? Yeah, I don't like to fry it too, too long because then it'll get dry, so. So what got you into cooking, Rosie? Um, I've always loved to cook. I always would cook for my brothers growing up. I was the only girl in my family, so. You got the job of cooking, huh? Yeah. Well, that's the most important thing, that you enjoy what you do. Yeah, you have to enjoy it, because if you don't, it'll show. So, just turn them over really fast. Since they're small pieces, we don't want them to overcook. Oh, yeah, they're turning golden <coughs> brown in a hurry. Yeah. I'd like to mention that Rosie was a, a fifth place winner in the... Uh, <laughs> The Taste of Honolulu cooking contest uh, last wow. year. So she did very well. Thank you. She was also featured, uh, one of the featured uh, presenters at the Taste of Honolulu, which was attended by about 100,000 people. Wow. And then uh, she was also featured in one of their cookbooks. That is so this incredible. is a, a, budding, a budding star here. <laughs> and also to the Hawaii Community College uh, Food Service Program. That's right. So you're a second year student? Yeah, I graduated in May. Do you have something lined up or pretty much lined up? Um, not quite. I'll just wait to see what comes, what's right for me. And so then uh, you're, you're also going to make a seafood cocktail sauce, Yes, we're right? going to make a seafood cocktail sauce to go with on the dish. Okay. Yum. You need a bowl. And the uh, seafood cocktail sauce consists of uh, one cup of ketchup, Thanks, Mr. Okay. I mean, two I tablespoons of celery minced, one tablespoon of L&P sauce, and one small onion, that's diced, okay. two teaspoons of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of horseradish. So now Rosie's going to put that all together. Yep. I have my one cup of ketchup. Okay. <coughs> one tablespoon of the Leon Perez Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Two tablespoons of celery minced. Okay. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Fresh squeezed, you can use bottle if you like. Fresh okay. is always better. One tablespoon of horseradish. Give it a little kick there. Yeah, definitely. And one small onion, diced. Right. I also wanted to mention, um, a tea that I've been drinking, it's really, really wonderful. It's called Glow Tea, and it also goes with a Glow Honey. It's used, you have to use it together. It um, was created by Chef Olelopa'a Faith Ogawa, and um, it really has changed my life a lot. It's done a lot of good things for me. Gives you energy, makes you feel great, absolutely great. And if anyone would be interested in trying, um, you can email Chef Ogawa at diningbyfaith at solarwater.com. It's really outstanding. You have to give it a try. And it's inexpensive, $5 for the honey, $5 for the tea. And you could use it according to your likes. 
So right oh, now, what what did you cook, uh, prepare when you won your award? Um, I made a Spanish chicken. It had eggplant, spinach, garlic, onions, cilantro, and reduced chicken broth. Wow! It had to be low in sodium. Um, it was just um, a healthy recipe, basically. So I I, pre I just prepared it myself, and I was thank grateful enough, and I won and. Really wow. proud of how, how many contestants were there all together? There see? were 15, but there were 30 recipes because people did double recipes. I see. So it, it was a real honor, and I'm grateful for it. So this is our cocktail sauce here. Okay, the seafood cocktail sauce, and then. And here's our finished product, our mahi mahi. So you would dip that in there and enjoy your mahi mahi. Okay, maybe we can get the overhead camera to zoom in on our. Partially breaded mahi mahi with a seafood cocktail sauce. And now our next uh, presentation is uh, ono saute with a seafood butter. And we're going to get uh, Curtis to come on. You're not going to bring your ukulele and uh, no. <laughs> later, huh? Okay. <laughs> So Curtis uh, Nihipali is going to do the uh, ono saute with a seafood butter. So what year are you in? Uh, I'm first. First year. Ah. And what got you into cooking, um, Curtis? I love to eat. <laughs> well, that's a good answer. <coughs> Okay, well, first off, I'm going to start off with the seafood butter. I got about uh, let's see, uh, Curtis, I think your microphone is not on. Can we check to see if it is? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. I think, let me check it out here. There we go. Okay, first I'm going to start with a uh, seafood butter. Okay. I got about half a cup of butter. Um, about a teaspoon or less, a little less than a teaspoon of garlic. Okay. Just add that in. I got some green onions. You can also use parsley. Okay. But it wasn't in the class. Sprinkle a little there. Okay. I'm also going to use um, oregano, okay. chopped finely. About a tablespoon of oregano. You just pretty much mix it up. Okay, so that's, uh, that's half a much pound of margarine or butter that's kind of soft. And then you, to that, you add two tablespoons of minced parsley and six cloves of garlic that's been finely minced and a tea tablespoon of oregano, chopped oregano. And that's going to make the seafood butter. So what are your plans, uh, Curtis, when you finish up? Mm, hopefully get a nice job. Um, okay. You, we you see like, what happens. Would you like to open up your own restaurant or would you like to work at a hotel or? Mm, restaurant would be nice. But we just see what the future got. Okay, that's done. Also got about a cup of sh uh, flour. Okay. So you use a cup of flour to uh, uh, bread coat, the fish. Coat your yeah. ono. I got about four four pieces of ono. Okay. Um, Pretty much filleted skin. So this this recipe calls for two pounds of ono that has been filleted and cut into uh, nice serving pieces. Yeah. Pretty much. And just coated Throw in it flour. In. Okay. 
So did you do a lot of cooking at home, Curtis, or? Um, not really. My mom is pretty much the cook. I just eat. <laughs> do you eat to live or live to eat? Either way you want to put it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you add the oil, um, the butter to the pan, let it melt completely. Okay. <clears throat> so how do you like the culinary, the food service program at Hawaii Community College? Uh, it's fun. I, I really wasn't really into college, so I got out of high school, and my teacher pretty much helped me get to high school. Fantastic. And so, here I am. On TV. You have your family watching you tonight? Um, no. No? <laughs> have no cable. Oh, okay. I want to get two channels, huh? Yeah. Just cook it until it's lightly brown. Okay. So ono is a pretty common fish, right? Yeah, Alan? very common. Yeah, in uh, in the mainland they call it wahoo. It's uh, actually one of the more favorite fishes that you find in Hawaii. It's uh, right up there next to mai mai. Uh, the reason they enjoy it, it's a white flesh fish, very tasty, very little bones. Uh, if you don't overcook it, it's really tasty. Uh, how many of you have not eaten ono before? But everybody in the audience knows what ono tastes like. Ono. Right, ono. <laughs> it's very tasty. Now, is that why they called it ono? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Actually, it was just called wahoo because when they caught that fish, you know, it makes such a big noise when it fights they and can, runs. You they know. can actually make kind of like a tuna out of this, yeah? yeah they, some people consider it part of the tuna family also, you know. Because uh, I had one of my friends, uh, one of my former graduates from, I think, Micronesia or something mm -hmm. or somewhere out there, Samoa, and they brought uh, some tuna and it said wahoo. Right, yeah. In fact, that's one of the bigger industries in the uh, South Pacific right now. They're canning wahoo. And if you haven't tasted it, it costs twice as much as tuna, but it's very tasty, you know. But they sell it at all the supermarkets uh, in town and maybe you want to try and pick it up. It's very tasty. It doesn't have that strong fishy smell or taste, but it's expensive. You know, Alan, I still get comments about the time you came on and did the spam cooking. Oh. <laughs> uh, I guess tonight we're going to do fish. We're doing so. fish tonight, yeah. All right. So how does it look there, Curtis? Looking good. Almost done. Okay. So that's one thing about fish. You don't want to overcook it. And uh, I guess the, these are uh, deep water fish, actually, Yes, it right? is, yes. So but actually, you can catch it up to about, uh, uh, we've caught them up to 80, 90 feet right along the shoreline. You know, when you, people that go out and spearfish, they actually see ono right close up to the shore too, you know. And how big do these uh, ono um, be? Normally, the average size is about between 40 and 60 pounds. Wow. And that's a very good size fish, you know. It's called one of the fastest fish in the ocean. It's very dangerous, but very tasty. Arranges. So uh, the so the uh, seafood butter is used when you you put it in the frying pan and yeah. cook it with the, the uno as the right. oil, pretty much. I see. That's the medium that you sauté it in. Uh, has a nice flavor. And, uh, okay. And there is a plate of uh, uno sauté with a seafood butter by Curtis Nihipali. Looks good. Thank and you. And next we have Mr. Dwayne Ishii. Okay. Dwayne Ishii. 
And Dwayne's going to do a Portuguese style fish. And again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194E, focus on agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hawaii Community College uh, Food Service uh, Program. And we have with us uh, Mr. Alan Okuda and uh, Philip Paraniel, uh, who are the instructors there at uh, Hawaii Community College. And we have uh, several of the, the students in the uh, food service program. And uh, right now we're going to have Dwayne uh, Ishii uh, come on and do a Portuguese style fish. So, Alan, have you had students with absolutely no cooking experience come into your program and turn out to be uh, pretty good chefs? Every, every semester. Uh, we've got people that uh, have a hard time boiling water. So I have a chance. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. So if when I you retire, retire we'll, then when I you retire, we'll keep a spot for you, Dr. Fuji. Okay. Then, then maybe I might be able to do some cooking on this program. There you go. Well, they'll probably invite you back to do part of the segment, huh? <laughs> they may turn the TV set off if I came on. <coughs> Portuguese style fish. Yeah, right now I'm just going to show how the marinade is done. Okay. So this one is pretty much you bake it, so it's going to show how it's being prepped. So, uh, so right here I have a, a piece of ahi okay. we're going to use. If you don't have ahi, you can substitute ono or aku. Okay. So right now I'm just going to cut into slabs. So you want to cut it into long slices, huh? Yeah. So are you a uh, first or second year? Uh, first year. First year. Yeah. And what got you into the cooking class? Um, ever since I was a kid, pretty much. Just like always to wanted cook, to huh? cook. Yeah. So the, right now I have one carrot. Okay. So cut the ends and cut it into stew cuts. Okay. Cutting into fancy uh, diagonals, huh? You notice that, Dr. Fuji? Yeah. And one onion. Okay. Actually, you're supposed to use two, uh, two carrots and two onions, but I just bring out one just to show okay. how it's done. So it's just cut it in, into big chunks. Okay. Actually, another good fish to prepare. How many are familiar with the hage or uh, the humu humu, the Hawaiian uh, state fish? Okay, another good way to prepare that is to also marinate it in this uh, in this particular sauce. You know, and it really tenderizes it and actually it comes out tasting like uh, codfish, <coughs> bacalao. Ah. So if you marinate it overnight, you know. Oh, but you got to use a plier to take the skin off of that. Oh, not necessarily. You know, if you there's a certain trick that you can use to cut it. You don't really don't need a plier. You know. Oh, is that right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Ah. <coughs> okay. Right now, I have one and a half cups of water. Okay. One and a half cups of water. One cup vinegar. One cup of vinegar. Yeah. White vinegar. White vinegar. Okay. And three cloves of garlic crushed. Okay, three cloves of garlic crushed. And you can either use two to four chili peppers if you want. Okay, that's a hot Hawaiian chili pepper. Yeah. Then you just let it marinate overnight and you bake it in the oven for three, 350 degrees for 45 minutes. Okay. Covered. 
Then after that, I'd take the cover off and brown it again for another 10 minutes. So that uh, you cover it with uh, aluminum foil? Yeah, foil is fine. Okay. And you can either, after that, just serve it on a platter and you can garnish with green onion or bell pepper. And through the magic of television, 45 minutes has elapsed. And here is Duane's Portuguese style aco or ahi. Ahi. <laughs> ahi. Okay. okay, thank you, Duane. Clean up your stuff. So they use uh, two pounds of ono or ahi or aku, one cup of vinegar, one and a half cups of water, two to four chili peppers finely chopped, uh, three cloves of garlic that's been crushed, two onions cut into chunks, and two carrots cut into chunks, and you marinate that overnight? Uh, the longer, at least two hours. At or least longer. two hours, mm -hmm. and then you preheat your oven at 350 degrees and you place all the fish and vegetables in a baking dish and you cover it and bake for 45 minutes and then remove the cover and brown for another 15 minutes and you've got Portuguese style fish. And for those of you who know what hage is, uh, <coughs> fish hage, trigger fish, that's a fish that really bites anything just That's about, correct, yeah. yeah. Any, anyone can catch it. Yeah, it's a very tough skin, but it's a very good flavor if you're very uh, familiar with eating it, huh? Okay, now we're gonna have Catherine. Catherine Fonseca is gonna do a stuffed apple macadamia. Oh, this looks like a dessert dish. It's basically combining two different dishes together. Basically, it's a, a cord papaya that we'll be stuffing with the famous uh, Waldorf salad. Yeah, the Waldorf salad was, uh, I understand, was invented for the Queen of Austria when she visited the United States uh, in New York. And the chef prepared a special apple salad for her. And this is what uh, Catherine's gonna prepare and stuff in the, the center of a papaya. So basically you can first start off by either cutting your apple or your papaya. So you just cut your papaya open in half and then clean out the seeds from the inside. So Catherine, are you a first year student or second year? Yes, yeah, this is my first year. Was uh, Nana gonna come on too, but Oh yes, Nena's gonna come on and he's gonna explain the five uh, different fishes that we have. Okay. They're, they're basically, uh, like I said, uh, undesirable fishes, but uh, if you see our presentation and how they're prepared, you might be interested in trying. Okay. But anyway, please try the fish. And then you'll find that it's uh, pretty good. So Catherine, what are your plans when you finish up? Um, I'll probably... I work in a restaurant or a bakery. I like baking. Does it make a difference whether you use a Fuji apple or a red delicious apple or? Um, I don't think it really makes a difference. Whatever your preference is. Okay. So you cut it, the apple into quarters and then you core it? Yes. Okay. Actually, I think they only had red delicious and uh, Macintosh apples way back in the 1930s when they invented this dish. Yeah. <laughs> These New Zealand apples are fairly new on the summer. And I get even this Fuji apple is kind uh -huh. of a new variety. I, is that part of your family uh, heritage, the Fuji apples? Yeah, that had one more eye. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so actually very rich because they developed the Fuji apple. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <coughs> now you just cut the apple into cubes. Kind of bite-sized chunks or um, more you could, slices? You can make it into chunks or how big, however big you want to make it. Then So most of your graduates uh, end up finding a job uh, here in Hilo or elsewhere <coughs> in the state or on the we, mainland? We've got, we've got people throughout the United States. We've got them in Honolulu, Maui, uh, 
quite a few on a big island. Uh, majority of the cafeteria managers are all our graduates. Um, we had one student we like to brag about. He became the chef at the White House. Wow. Um, we have a lot of executive chefs, restaurant owners, business owners. They're all former graduates of the program. So in your program, uh, it's not only cooking, you also have to teach them how to handle money and uh, things like that? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. We offer uh, a coffee shop or like a short order style of uh, food preparation, like a Ken's Pancake House type of deal. But uh, there's also the storeroom operation where you learn how to purchase, uh, record and issue out items and keep uh, good controls. Uh, the cashiering station, you're responsible for uh, receiving uh, giving out change, uh, reconciling your cash at the end of the day. So it's it's uh, really a full gamut of the whole operation. You get eight different stations in a program. So you end up uh, being a pretty good, uh, well-rounded individual. Mm. We, we don't like to say that we're going to turn you into an executive chef when you graduate. But basically, the experience that you gain, it should get you hired and keep you uh, employed for a long period of time. And that, I think... Uh, is anyone's goal right now just to get hired, huh? And then it's up to the individual right. how That's high correct. they want to. That's correct. They want to get. Mm -hmm. okay. So after you finish dicing your apple, you're gonna add a quarter cup of mayonnaise. Okay. Is that the? Is it, that was quarter cup of what? Mayonnaise. Okay. Yeah. And then one tablespoon of honey. Okay, one tablespoon of honey, mm -hmm. preferably local honey. Mm -hmm. That was lehua. Lehua honey. honey. Yeah. Um, Best foods mayonnaise, by the way. Two okay. tablespoons of celery. One tablespoon of raisins. That's not enough. Oh. No. <laughs> you can add more raisins if you want. One tablespoon of mac nuts. Okay, mac nuts. Oh, and this is really a local half dish. a teaspoon of lemon, grated lemon. Okay. Then you just mix that all together. So what do you think the, the hardest part of the uh, food service program is, uh, Catherine? So far, it's kind of duck soup? Yeah, most, for the most part. Okay. So after you finish mixing that together, then you would just fill, your, fill the inside of your papaya where you cleaned out the seeds from. Ah. Now that is a healthy dish. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. enough of two. So that, that's called a stuffed apple macadamia. Ah, it should be papaya. Oh, stuffed papaya macadamia. Okay. Stuffed papaya macadamia. Mm. I could eat several of those. Let's put them on the ends, right on the ends. Yeah. And that's your finished product. Would you consider this a, a salad or would you consider it kind of a dessert or what would you consider this? Uh, basically, this could go as an appetizer salad or it could go as a salad entree. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. If that's you wanted to make it into an, a real entree, just add some maybe diced chicken oh. or a scoop of cottage cheese or sherbet and then that'll be like more of an entree type of dish. I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that is very healthy and uh, nutritious. Okay, now we're going to have uh, Nena. And Nena is going to uh, come on. I think what we're doing is uh, trading a microphone now. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194E, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hawaii Community College Food Service Program.
And my guests this evening are Alan Okuda, who's the instructor there at the Hawaii Community College. And maybe while we're waiting for Nana to come on board, uh, maybe we can get our overhead camera to zoom in on some of the dishes that have been prepared for us. But it looks like Nana's coming right now, so uh, I hear that uh, Nana is the comedian of the oh, of food course. service program. Right. He's, he's, the enter he's like Cedric the Entertainer, but we have our own Nana Jack. <laughs> okay. <coughs> okay. Okay, Nana. Thank you. Okay, good evening. Um, tonight we have some fish that I haven't caught. Um, it's, uh, we have Kamasu, that's uh, Heller's uh, Barracuda. Okay. Um, we have Queen uh, Triggerfish. Uh, we also have Taape. Uh, Oio, also known as Bonefish. Uh, and we also have uh, Akule, uh, also known as Gogoai. Okay. Okay, and um, for our Kamasu, um, we had uh, grilled the Kamasu. Can you point to the the kamasu? Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah, right there. this one's our kamasu. <laughs> okay. And That's uh, a barracuda. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have our uh, queen triggerfish that ha was broiled, and um, we had decorated with uh, kamaboko. Oh. And um, you know, just like all things, you know, it might be ugly, but you can make it beautiful, like me. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Did also you actually go out and catch all these fish? <laughs> oh no, I. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I waited for the delivery truck to come in, and uh, <laughs> I actually <laughs> and just uh, just brought it in, you know. That's a good way to catch oh, a yeah. fish, no? Yep. <laughs> also, uh, uh, yes, uh, we also have a uh, toffee that we also had uh, deep fried. We okay. had uh, put in a uh, hamburger. Oh. And this is the. Uh, Tape. Tape, okay. Um, the OEO we had um, had uh, steamed uh, steamed it, yeah. But first we had skinned it and um, we used the fork to get the flesh off of it. So the OEO, that's a real bony fish, right? Yeah. So so how do you get the flesh out of the OEO without the bone? Oh, I didn't do that part. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, I ran away. Basically, so. what we did is, <laughs> what you can do is freeze your OEO overnight. Okay. And when it thaws out the next day, cut into fillets. Uh huh. And with a fork and spoon, you just gently take all the flesh off. Oh, you just scrape it right you off. Scrape the bone. it off the bones, and ah. then you mix it with um, cornstarch uh, seasoning and raw egg, and then you form it into like a fish cake. And you can mold it, you can roll it, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. And that's that's the roll on the, the far end uh, down there. Ah, yeah. I see. Yes. And then uh, we also have the uh, akule, which was uh, sautéed. Um, I believe it's this one, right? Right. Okay. This is this fish, and uh, we had uh, sautéed it, and um, and for like our garnishes, we got like uh, carrots and lemons and whatever you can find pretty much around the house. Um, and just try to make it nice. So how do you, how do you like, like the uh, barracuda there, uh, kamasu, how, how do you cook it so that it stays in that shape like that? Well, it, it was uh, pan fried, yeah, uh -huh. and then when it's um, still, still, um, I believe, if it's still soft mm -hmm. while cooking, you can curl it and ah. then refrigerate it, and then after refrigeration, it holds its shape. So boy, you can do all kinds of creative things with some of our local reef fish, yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yes, you can. Oh, there's one more that I forgot to tell you about. Uh, this was uh, Ininoi or Ninoi. Are you familiar with that fish? It's a shoreline fish and we made uh, a poke out of that. Ah. Yep. And Ninoi is uh, easy to catch with a... Uh, uh, hook, and hook and line, and normally the uh, people use bread. bread. Right. Bread's a good bait, or uh, you can even use limo. And and they give a good fight too. They do very uh, strong. It has a very strong uh, limo flavor and taste. So it's a matter. It's an acquired taste, you know. So maybe you want to come up and try some of these different fish. Uh. Nenui. Mm -hmm. yeah. ac actually, all these fish were, were were caught by my son. Uh -huh. uh, he went out uh, on his boat and he caught every one of these fish that we use for the display today. And rather than uh, cook it up and give it to the cat, we thought we'd do something special. 
And actually, people might think it's rubbish fish. You throw it away, you can't use it, but you can actually make a really nice display and actually it's very good tasting. Uh, Ta'api was something brought into the Hawaiian Islands uh, 1960s or 50s, was it, to it's supplement the fish supply? I think so, yes. But there's so much of it now, it's overtaking uh, the, the regular population. Nobody likes to eat it because it's yellow and has a blue stripe. But if you've never tried cooking this or eating this fish, it's very, very tasty. You know? In fact, there's a particular way that I do in a microwave. Uh, you take the whole fish, you clean it, cook it uh, for a minute and a half on high on both sides, put some melted butter and garlic in there, and steam it with uh, saran wrap on top, and then you actually come out tasting pretty close to lobster. Wow. And that's tapi. The tapi, that the yellow blue line snapper. Now right. there's some tapi that's kind of reddish color. Are those okay, kind of uh, yeah, interbreeding. That, uh, no, that's a different variety. That's called a toao. That's a type, another type of snapper. But that one's a little bit higher price because uh, it doesn't have the blue stripe. I see. But it's uh, they pretty much taste the same, you know. So, but I understand from uh, one of our students from Okinawa. He said the uh, the tapi is actually a very prized fish in Okinawa. Wow. You know, it's a very expensive food fish there, so. Well, it might be rubbish to us, but to other countries, it's very expensive and uh, so very worthwhile and tasty. Taapi, you can catch pretty much from the shore, yeah? That's true, that's and true. And the nenui, you can catch it. Right, the, from the shore. And the trigger fish is another one, and the oio. Mm -hmm. What about akule? Akule or gagola, have anybody heard the term gagolai before? That's a mainland name for the, the mackerel scad. Oh. But actually, you know, in the mainland, the gagolai or akule is just used for bait. Nobody eats it. It's mm. actually a really a trash fish in the mainland. But here, it's one of the more favorite fishes that uh, people yeah, enjoy. I, I like uh, fried akule. Even the papio and olua is rubbish in the mainland. They don't like to eat stuff like that. But it's so, you know, well respected here in Hawaii. Eh? So different f uh, taste for different folks. Huh? So okay. go out and try some of these things. You know, it's, you'll be presently surprised. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. it for tonight, and we're going to open it up to uh, question and answers. So, <coughs> I hope uh, you folks back home have uh, jotted down some questions. Uh, the numbers Thank will be on the screen okay. shortly. <laughs> the numbers are 961-9046 and 974-7726. So, if you have any questions for our guests this evening, uh, please give us a call. If you recognize some of the uh, students here, uh, you might give them a call and uh, ask questions. Again, we are coming to you live this evening. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194E, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hawaii Community College uh, Food Service Program. Uh, while we uh, wait for any uh, phone calls, uh, do we have any questions from our classroom this evening? No questions from the classroom. We have a question. Okay, Marilyn, go ahead. Slide on, yes. Um, you mentioned about the tea. Does it have caffeine in it? It's outstanding. It's worth a try. Thank you. This is a, a special kind of a tea to drink? <coughs> yeah, it's called Glow Tea and Glow Honey. Okay. Uh, we have our first caller, so uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, you're on the air. For Dwayne Ishii. Okay, for a question for Dwayne, go ahead. Did he say that he cooked the fish or not? That was a really nice presentation, and I would like to know how I could get the recipe. Okay, uh, Dwayne? <coughs> you know, it's not cooked, it's baked. You bake it I'm sorry, can you repeat yourself, please? It's not cooked, it's baked. You bake it for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Oh! Okay. That answer the question. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for calling. You're welcome. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. And I. <laughs> okay. Do we have another phone caller? 
We don't have a phone caller, and so while we wait for some phone calls, do we have any questions from the uh, classroom? No question for the classroom. Well, I'm going to need some help out there, folks. Uh, the numbers. Are announcement, Dr. Fuji? Yes, go ahead. April the first, the community college will be having our seventh annual Hilo Culinary Classic. Uh, students from the program, from the Kona program, high schools, professionals, and uh, former graduates will be doing a food show and presentation. Okay, that's April first. Right, April and first. Where, where will that be? Down at the college. Okay, at the community college. It's eight dollars. You can eat uh, whatever poopoo we set out for. There's going to be a nice poopoo spread. You can view all the displays. It's a competitive food show, and you get to see all the fine, fancy work that the students will do. And, and remember, time? all you can eat. <laughs> and what time is that? It starts about 10:30 to about one. Okay. April and the 1st. So uh, you do a lot, uh, the students do a lot of cooking over there at the community college. So what do you do with all the food? Do you? Well, basically we, we serve uh, the student population and faculty and staff. And uh, can the public go there oh yes. and have lunch? Use this to Fridays. We're open from 9 to 12.30 every day. Uh, on Wednesdays to Fridays, we also have the gourmet fine dining room that's open. And that's Wednesday to Fridays. Reservations requested. Uh, the prices range from four dollars on up to maybe six dollars in the dining uh, cafeteria. In a dining room, goes from what seven eight dollars to maybe ten would be the highest for okay. a fine dining experience. So please come and join us. Well, uh, Alan, we have another caller, so let's take the caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, <coughs> please? Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? Waimanalo. Call from Waimanalo, um, Oahu, and your question. Uh, this is about the, the fishes that were caught, you know, the reef fishes. Okay. And he mentioned, you know, the, the one fish that you could steam it and it would taste like lobster. Okay. Uh, Alan, can you uh, go over that one more time? Uh, that's basically the tape, the yellow blue line snapper. Uh, if you microwave it on high for a minute and a half on both sides, using some melted butter and margarine and garlic and cover with saran and it uh, should turn out into a very not very nice dish so three minutes stops to cook it and it would taste like a lobster well <laughs> that's what some people claim <laughs> okay thank you okay okay thank well you. thank you for calling from waimanalo there on oahu do we have another caller no, no caller. Do we have any questions from the classroom? Not going to help me out tonight, huh? Going to make me work up here this evening. <laughs> okay. For those of you who just joined us, you're, we have a caller. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Uh, good evening, Dr. Fuji. Hi. I'd like to ask one of your female students about the tea that she mentioned. Okay. Um, uh, let's see, was that Rosie? Can you tell us about the tea one more time? Um, the tea is called it's called glow um, glow uh, tea and glow honey. Um, if you want to purchase it, you can um, order it through um, Chef Olelo Pa'a Ogawa, and her email address is dining by faith at oh. at solarwater.com could you repeat that once again dining by faith at solarwater.com it contains chamomile um, lemongrass and peppermint it's really outstanding you will notice a difference i guarantee you that okay it's dining by faith dining by faith at solarwater.com SolarWater.com. And her name is uh, Chef Olelo Pa'a, Faith Ogawa. Hello. Uh -uh. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, thank you for calling. Uh, of course, we don't endorse any particular product, but uh, if you want to try that out, uh, it's up to you. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. 
I'm calling from Kauai. Okay, and your question? And my question is, I would like um, someone to repeat the seafood cocktail sauce recipe. Okay, the seafood cocktail sauce uh, recipe, that was rosy, and that's a partially breaded mahi-mahi with a seafood cocktail sauce. So, Rosie, you want to go over that again? Sure. Um, it's one cup ketchup, two tablespoons celery minced, one tablespoon L&P Worcestershire sauce, one small onion diced, two tablespoons of lemon juice, either fresh or bottled is fine, two tablespoon, one tablespoon of horseradish. Okay, I got it. Thank you. You're very okay, welcome. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Kauai. And uh, I will get uh, all of these recipes typed up, and uh, uh, we still don't have our website uh, up and going, so if you would like these recipes, just email me or, uh, or phone me. If you, uh, if, if you email it to me, that's the easiest way. Then I can attach it to the email. But if you'd like to write to me, uh, please send me a self-addressed uh, stamped e envelope and I'll mail you the recipes. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? From Hilo. Wow, okay. Uh, we're getting some odd phone calls again tonight, so, but we'll just keep going. Uh, if you have another question, uh, let us know. Um, yes, okay. I do. Okay. The guy in the back of the lady that was just talking looked kind of like Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> and you guys got to learn how to smile. Okay, well, thank you for calling. And uh, I guess uh, all of you folks over there, uh, let's get a shot of all the students. Uh, they're, they're, they're all smiling. <laughs> There we go. Even Mr. Nice Miyagi big smile. Is smiling, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have another caller? No caller. What about questions from the classroom? Come on, help me out, folks. Got a question? Yeah. Take question in the back. Uh, you did the ono, the ono saute with seafood butter. Oh, uh, what about the what about what it now? What's your name? You want Artist. to know the the recipe? Um, yeah. Okay, uh, that's uh, Curtis. You want to go over the recipe again, yes, Curtis? Yes, sure. Um, it's two pounds of ono. Filet. Uh, one cup flour. Okay. Uh, half a pound of margarine or butter. Soften. Two tablespoons of minced uh, parsley or green onion. About six cloves of garlic. And one tablespoon of oregano. Okay, and the, and the garlic and the oregano mm. are chopped, finely. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Pearl City again. Okay, from Pearl City. And uh, I would like to ask about the glow tea once more. Uh, what does it do? Does it cleanse your body or lose weight? Um, you don't lose weight on it. I mean, um, you you just feel, it's a wonderful feeling. You just feel great. I, you have energy. I just feel great. <laughs> That's how I can describe it. Energetic. You have to try it and see for yourself. And if uh, someone is taking medication, would that be any complications for that? Um, it contains chamomile, lemongrass, and peppermint, but you should consult your physician before taking it. You can order it. It's all natural stuff. Oh well, yeah, because it does sound kind of aromatic. Mm-hmm. It's it's really uh -huh. really nice. How many credits do you need in order to graduate from the um, program at the 63. community college? Sixty-three credits. And that's like what four semesters? Four semesters in the culinary program, and then you need to take um, prerequisites for the course as well, for the program. English, math, management. Uh, what is the emphasis for this semester? Um, right now, we're um, preparation type. Mm -hmm. We're in the gourmet dining room, so we're learning how to serve customers. We're learning how to prepare um, wonderful dishes, presentations. So that's what we're doing right now. Oh, 
Thank us you. second years. I'm sorry, what was that? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Pearl City, and we have another caller, so could you let us know where you're calling from? And um, we'll Kona. Okay, and your question? On the Portuguese style fish, Yes. can you uh, repeat the ingredients for the marinade? Okay, Dwayne, can you go over the uh, marinade again for the Portuguese style fish? It's one cup vinegar, one and a half cup water, three cloves of garlic crushed, and chili pepper if you desire, if you want. Two to three chili peppers. And what was the temperature? 350 for 45 minutes. Okay, Th those are all great dishes tonight. Good job. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Kona. And uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're <coughs> calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? I just have a question for Curtis. Okay. I was wondering what high school he came from that his teachers would encourage him to go into this field. Cal High. Curtis went to Kao High School. And who was his teacher? Um, Miss Christensen and Miss Andrade. Nice to see you there, Curtis. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> okay, Miss Andrade. <laughs> I'll see you later, boy. Is that uh, <laughs> Curtis? Was that your teacher? Yeah. All right. Yeah. We are also very proud of you, Curtis, uh, and we thank you for coming on and preparing that uh, ono saute with the seafood butter. I think we have another caller. Uh, the caller hung up on me. Please call again. <laughs> okay, I think, I think uh, we're getting the caller back again. The numbers are on the screen. The numbers Hello. are not. Yes, go ahead. Where are you calling from? Hi, Dr. Fuji. Hi. Oh, this must be Pat from Honomu. Yes. Okay. On the Portuguese style fish, he didn't put any salt. No, because it has vinegar, yeah. If you want oh, to. Okay. Does that answer the question, Pat, or do you have another? Well, yeah, Come on, ask me another question. Well, we have to put salt in mine, so that's what I was wondering. Okay. You're not going to ask another question to help me out tonight? <laughs> no, dear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good night. Bye-bye. Okay, well, thanks for calling, Pat. Uh, <clears throat> we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Did you hear that, folks? Uh, somehow our caller got cut off there. Uh, do we still have another caller? Okay, uh, if you got cut off, uh, please call us again. The numbers are on the screen, 961. 9046 and 974-7726 and uh, please give us a call. We have a caller so uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question please. <laughs> My goodness, I'm having a rough night tonight. If Okay, the caller's back. Uh, go ahead, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Puna. Okay, Puna. And this is for Rosie. Okay, Rosie. You're lovely, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Who's that, Rosie? That's my thank mom. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you for calling, Mom. Thank uh, you. You guys are doing an awesome job. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Puna. That's uh, Rosie's <laughs> mom. And, uh, yes, she did an excellent job. I'm sure she's going to go a long ways in the culinary arts program. I and know she will. Do you have another question for us? We have a lot of time. Uh, that's now. it. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, thank you for calling <laughs> from Pune. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Hawaiian Beaches. Okay. This is a comment for the lady in the black hat in the front row. Okay. If she wore a silver glove, she would look like Michael Jackson. 
Okay. Boy, man, we got all kinds of Mess callers up. tonight. <laughs> we have another caller. Uh, could you <laughs> let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Uh, Dr. Fuji. Hi, Haruso Joe. Thank you for calling. <laughs> yeah. Need you. I w I w today, I was watching BAM, you know, on the Food Network. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, he, he cooked the uh, ahi uh -huh. a certain way to make it look nice. Okay. And uh, you remember the time that I tried to get that uh, Cornish hen to look nice? The and, Cornish uh, hen? I had one hell of a yeah, Cornish hen. But anyway, uh, I finally got a way, a simple way to make it look nice. Okay. And what I did was rub it up with olive oil. Olive oil. And, and bam, tonight, uh -huh. also use olive oil. Did you, get, did you call him up or, and let him know or, or was no, it no. just a coincidence? Yeah. I don't know how that thing ever happened, but but he, he used olive oil. Okay. And that thing looked nice. So I want you to and Dr. Okuda uh, to uh, uh, try it out. And so use after olive you, oil. After you put the olive yeah. oil on, what do you do with the Cornish right. hen? Salt and pepper, and you put olive oil on the outside. Okay. And you broil it until it's on uh, rare, rare, medium rare, or whatever. Okay. Don't, don't overcook them now. Okay. And I think, I imagine it will taste real good. And it will look nice too. Did because you try I it out? Because I olive oil on a uh, Cornish hen. Okay. Did you and actually it try it out at home? I, I tried it up, on, especially on Cornish hen. Okay. It came, came out nice and uh, it's not reddish brown, but it comes nice and tannish brown. Oh. Whereas the other way it comes out pale, you know. Mm -hmm. Ah, so you get so that nice... Uh, olive oil. <laughs> that, that's, that's the thing that uh, makes it look nice. What do you think? And that uh, ahi, okay. you put salt and pepper, uh -huh. and put olive oil outside, uh -huh. and then braise it. Uh, and uh, and his, his ahi looks nice on TV, so <laughs> it, it, it must be nice uh, just with, just where it is. Well, we can't wait so, to taste this food. And uh, uh, so, so Professor Okuda, I want you to try it. Because I, I know you're the type that would go ahead and try. Olive oil. Okay, thank you. Don't let people tell you olive oil smells bad. It was in the olden days when the team was... Uh, oxidized that made it smell bad. Olive oil to date, I have never come across an olive oil that w that had a bad smell. Yeah, so actually, that's uh, my comment to you. Okay, well, you thank on you. The subject of fish. Thank you very <laughs> much uh, for your uh, helpful okay. hints, uh, Haruso Joe. Okay, thank you. We'll try uh, that. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Fuji. Okay, thank you for calling and thank you for helping me out. We have another. Oh, about another 15 minutes, so we have a lot of time. For those of you who try to get a hold of us, now is your chance. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay. And I just want to tell everybody to do a great job. Rock on! <laughs> Woo-hoo! All right. Well, thank you for okay, calling. Okay, funny, funny. Who's that? Okay, no, are we going to be uh, like a box of chocolate again tonight? Uh, okay, well, the next caller, let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. I'm from Hilo. Okay, Hilo, and your question? Um, for the HCC uh, cooking class, uh -huh. do you have um, a, a place where the public can come in and eat lunch at the cafeteria? Okay. Ellen? Uh, yes, we do. We serve meals from uh, 9.30 to 12.30, Tuesdays to Fridays. We also have the gourmet dining room from Wednesday to Fridays. And the public is all invited. So please come down and try us. Oh, I have before. I was a student over there, and you guys used to make really good locomoco. Okay, we, we still make those good locomocos yet, so come and try us again. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, well, thank you for calling from Hilo. <laughs> and we have another caller, so uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Yeah, calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question. Yeah, this is for Alan. Okay. Uh, Alan, hey, it's been over a year, I think, since your students made this special New York-style cheesecake. How can I get more? Okay, we'll make it up next week for you then. So give us a call next week. We'll have it on the menu. Okay, Alan, take care. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling. And so if you want to eat a uh, nice cheesecake uh, next week, give uh, Alan a call, and uh, he'll let you know when it's available. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling? Hi. Hi, where are you calling from? Um, from the Big Island in Hilo. Okay, and your question? Um, I have a question for Rosie. Okay. Um, I'd like to know, again, how she made the mahi-mahi and the directions for the sauce. Okay, Rosie, uh, can you go over that seafood cocktail sauce once again? Um, first of all, it's a cup of um, ketchup, two tablespoons of celery minced, one tablespoon of Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, um, one small onion diced, two tablespoons of lemon juice, fresh or bottled is fine. I used fresh this evening. And one tablespoon of horseradish. That's the seafood cocktail sauce. Okay, and for so that's it then basically? <coughs> mm -hmm. And then for the mahi-mahi, um, I just cubed it, um, floured it, egg washed it, then panko, then fry. Okay, um, thank you so much. You're welcome. Go thank girl. you. Okay. <laughs> thank okay, you. Okay, well, thank you for calling. Okay. All righty, bye. 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 We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Kona. Okay, call from Kona and your question. Rosie, you are one hot tamale. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your friend, Rosie? I don't know. <laughs> okay. No hot tamales tonight. <laughs> okay. I think we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? You're gonna be so at the end of the night. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yes. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Kauai. Okay. And your question? But I'm originally from Big Island. Okay. From Kapo. Oh. Okay. And um, I wanted to really um, that guy that with with the Ininui, okay? He's really doing a good job because it's not a junk fish. Oh, I the Ninui. The with that, yeah, the Ininui. Yes. Yeah, it's very good, and I'm so proud of him. You keep going, baby. Okay. I'm, I'm from yeah, oh, Kapoho, oh, okay. but I'm vacationing right now oh. on Kauai. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> for Nana. Call for Nana. Uh, why don't you get up in the front, Nana, and say uh, hello to the caller from Kauai. Hello, Nana. Yeah, wave, wave to me right now. I'm looking what at you. What is there? I cannot find you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. They're it's getting a nice close-up. It's a good fish. I know. I, I eat anything, so, you know. <laughs> You can tell by my size. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Ahoyo. Okay, aloha and thank you for calling. Nena, you. is that your friend from Kauai? Mahalo. I don't know, but she's a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. well, we have a lot of nice people up there on Kauai who help me out and give me a call all the time. <coughs> Do we have another caller? We have another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Back in 82, I get the pig skin. What was that again? I'm out. What was that again? Back in 82, I could throw a pig skin a quarter mile. Good for you. Okay, yes. you can throw a pig skin a quarter mile. Okay, you ought to join one of those well, uh, contests that they have uh, during the football season, the throwing that football. <laughs> but uh, not on this so program, but thank you for calling it. anyway. We have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. The caller hung up.
Okay, the numbers are still on the screen. The numbers are 961, 9046, and 974, 7726. And we have another caller, so could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Oh, I'm calling again from Hilo. Okay. I wanted to ask, um, can outside businesses make an order for lunch from uh, the ETC cafeteria? Okay, Alan? Uh, yes, we do. We take uh, outside takeout orders uh, on a daily basis, so please call early, and we'd be happy to take your order, sir. Okay, and if we uh, request it for a fax for uh, your we menu? We can also can send, send it to you also. Oh, so okay, when you okay. stop by, Thank let us much. know your number, and we can, we'll fax uh, the menu to you. Okay, you have a good show, Dr. Fuji. Well, thank you for calling, and uh, thank you for your kind words. Uh, it's always nice to hear those nice words. And of course, uh, this class wouldn't be possible without uh, students at the Hawaii Community College uh, Food Service Program, and people like uh, Alan Okuda and uh, Philip uh, Paraniel, uh, who joined us this evening. I think we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I call it from Kauai. Okay, we got another caller from Kauai. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> That's right, I'm a caller from Kauai. You guys, the food is so gassy. <laughs> I make the recipe and my father just sweat all night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, I didn't quite get that one. That one was too fast for me, but uh, thanks for calling. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Honolulu. Okay. And this is um, Haruso Jack. Remember? Oh, Haruso yes. Haruso short for Haruso Not a hallucination. Yeah. Okay. You got anyway, a question I had, first. I had a question about the Portuguese starfish. Okay. Um, you know the Portuguese starfish, do they swim in schools? <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, they just hop into the boat. But anyway, what I had, a, I had another question for. Uh, you you know, ought to be on TV. What color? Is that? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, that the guy with the colored hair. What color is that? <laughs> it looks on my TV. It looks red. Well, I thought it black. But anyway, my my real question. I wanted <laughs> to know, like, if the um. If the drapes match the rug. Jeez, I, I didn't get that one either. Uh, well, thanks for calling me, uh, material. Aruso, Jack, or whatever. Uh, we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello. Hi, where are you calling from? Honoka. Uh, okay, Honoka, and your question. What does it cost to go to culinary school? What does it cost? How much does it cost? Okay, Alan, uh, do you know? Can you answer that? Uh, maybe Rosie can, because she's okay, just paid Rosie. the tuition. Okay, Rosie. six dollars. It's forty-seven dollars yeah. per credit for residents. Forty-seven dollars per credit for residents, and um, non-residents pay two hundred and forty-two dollars per credit. And there's like a sixty-dollar um, student fee included. So altogether, maybe around. Um, less than 600 for a 12 credit semester and minus the books the excuse me how long is the semester uh, almost like four months four months a semester four months yeah okay okay well thank, thank you for you. calling from Honoka we have another <laughs> caller uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question please um, calling from you okay and your question Actually, it's a comment. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to say that, uh, Dr. Fuji, your program is really good every Thursday. Me and my family uh, watch it every Thursday religiously. Thank you. So you're doing a good job. Thank and you. And you have good guests, like especially tonight, the ATC uh, cooking crew. Good job, you guys. Thank you. Well, you know, if there's anybody out there yeah, in the hello. community that would like to come on the, the cooking class, uh, Please give me a call. If I could have the Elmo, please. Uh, there's uh, several ways that you can get a hold of me. And if you would like to uh, come on and do some cooking demonstration for us, uh, we'd uh, be happy to have you. 
you can call me at 933-0850 or you can fax me at 974-7674 or email me at jfujii at hawaii.edu. And I thank you very much for your kind words and uh, it's always thank good you. to hear these uh, Keep up the good words. work. Thank you very much. We have another uh, two more minutes, so we have time for another caller. Do we have another caller? Okay, we have another caller, so uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, are you on the air? It looks like our caller doesn't want to say anything. We Hello? We, okay, go ahead. Where are you calling from? Yes. I, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question, please. So my question is, uh, I'd, I'd like to know how much a, a meal is at the uh, Community cafeteria. College? Okay, Alan, uh, can you go over the prices again for our, our caller here in Hilo? Okay, in a cafeteria, the prices start from $4.50 uh, on up to maybe five fifty. In a gourmet dining room, it'll go from uh, maybe six ninety five up to about eight nine dollars. So it's a real reasonable price. Uh, local mocos in a three four dollar range. So please come and join us. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling, and I think we've completely run out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Hawaii Community College uh, Culinary Program with Alan Okuda and Philip uh, Paranal and uh, all the students that joined us this evening, Curtis Nihipali, Rosie Colon, uh, Enmi Kao, uh, Nana Jack, Catherine Fonseca, and Dwayne Ishii. Uh, we hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening when we will have the Hawaii Community College Auto Body Program and their students will be here to cook some local dishes for us. So we hope that you'll join us next Thursday evening. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you for watching and have a good evening.